so is the recording on yes it is on okay okay so then okay we'll start now so uh, hello everyone uh, in this recording i'll be talking to professor mathli the team leader for knowledge transfer of the cl for stem project uh, we will hear from her about the core ideas of pedagogy followed in cl for stem project and the conceptual framework developed for the same so hello professor mathli we would like to hear from you what is cl for stem project and uh, what does it hope to achieve thank you uh, zinat um cl for stem is in fact a pilot scaling of the connected learning initiative approach to teach a professional development in new country contexts namely bhutan nigeria and tanzania cl for stem uh, the full form uh, refers to connected learning for stem aims to build capacities of middle and secondary school science and mathematics teachers to foster inclusive higher order learning in their classrooms teacher educators of the three countries have worked hard to bring out specially designed self learning online modules to enhance teachers pedagogical content knowledge and to foster the use of universal design learning principles to ensure inclusion and equity in the stem classrooms a mobile based community of practice is being set up to support peer group professional learning among the participating teachers the teacher professional development efforts through this project is meant to promote higher order thinking among students thank you for this uh, introduction so uh, now we would like to know from you like uh, so what are the key areas of teachers knowledge addressed uh, in this framework which is used uh, in this project and uh, how are they different or uh, connected to each other and what are the areas why are these areas of knowledge important um so everyone recognizes that the teacher should have a good understanding of the subject she is teaching now subject matter knowledge involves two components not only should a teacher know the content of the subject but also the nature and structure of the subject so if we look at knowledge of a subject as one uh, key component of a teacher's knowledge base um some of the important elements of this knowledge include knowing the big ideas the key concepts and theories that define the particular subject then uh, a teacher should also know about the interconnections between the concepts and topics within uh, that uh, particular uh, subject and also how it connects to other uh, subjects as well and uh, more importantly a teacher must be able to identify what counts as knowledge within the domain of uh, say science or uh, mathematics now in terms of the nature and structure of uh, science and mathematics um for example a science teacher a physics teacher must know that uh, science is empirical and uh, physics as a domain of study has a very highly structured uh, way of looking at the world and understanding the world and uh, certainly these are situated in particular historical social economical and political uh, contexts um for example a uh, science teacher must also know that uh, science requires creativity and imagination and that modern science is a collaborative enterprise within the uh, institutional spaces uh, in the current context so these are some of the examples of uh, the component of subject matter knowledge so again the importance of a general pedagogical knowledge is also widely acknowledged uh, by all uh, who are involved in the education sector current teacher education programs in almost all countries include some or all of the components of uh, general pedagogical knowledge uh, these include uh, knowing about the learners and the processes of learning um, so issues around equity and inclusion when it comes to learners uh, which again 
involves uh, the knowledge of universal design of uh, learning, ability to provide equal opportunities to all students to participate in the classroom uh, interaction, and uh, the ability to use the universal design learning principles to design lessons, to uh, adapt resources and uh, assessments to meet the diverse needs of learners. Another core uh, pedagogical uh, knowledge of teachers is classroom uh, management. So different forms of classroom interactions for an, uh, making a classroom active, uh, then a knowledge of positive disciplining uh, techniques, the ability to manage time, resources, and uh, uh, also the needs, uh, catering to the needs of diverse uh, uh, learners and managing their uh, behavior. All these are important aspects of the general pedagogical uh, knowledge. And uh, this also includes knowledge of assessment, the multiple modes uh, and uh, tools of assessment for the allowing students to express in different uh, ways. Um, now, uh, the subject content knowledge and general pedagogical knowledge are widely uh, followed as important uh, components of the knowledge base of teachers. Um, way back in 1986, um, the educational researcher Lee Shulman had proposed a category, unique category called pedagogical content uh, knowledge that a teacher possesses. So he said that this is a specialized uh, knowledge of a teacher. And uh, this is what, uh, for example, differentiates a mathematician from a mathematics teacher. Now, uh, since the proposition of uh, Shulman's idea of uh, pedagogical content knowledge or PCK for short, it has been variously uh, defined by researchers and educators. It's now widely acknowledged as a transformation of the content and the pedagogical, uh, general pedagogical knowledge. So the transformation of both these knowledge bases is what constitutes pedagogical knowledge. So you were asking, uh, how are they different? So uh, I have just uh, enumerated the differences between the content, uh, subject content knowledge and the pedagogical knowledge. Um, now the pedagogical content knowledge is where the two forms of knowledge come in. So it is uh, meant to be a transformation of the content knowledge that a teacher learns through her, uh, uh, say, a, a bachelor's degree in science or a master's degree in physics and a teacher training degree uh, of pedagogic knowledge. So pedagogical content knowledge is where the teacher is able to bring the two together and the transformed knowledge that a teacher uses in the classroom is the pedagogical content knowledge. Now PCK has been uh, you know, over the past four decades widely been used as a framework for teacher education, as well as to understand how teachers learn to teach and assess the development of knowledge. Now, uh, we have combined literature on uh, PCK of science and mathematics with our own experience in uh, developing this uh, framework, which has been used to guide the preparation of the modules for uh, CL First STEM project, as well as to assess the impact of the project on teachers' uh, learning. Would you like to expand a little bit more about though you already said a lot about pck but uh, like uh, so we have this uh, graphic on pck about different components so uh, would you like to expand about the different uh, elements that are part of pck yes um so pck is uh, a complex construct um because teaching is a complex cognitive uh, task. So earlier, uh, this was considered as a black box and uh, it was only the behavior of the teachers in classrooms that was observed and uh, studied extensively. Um, since the uh, introduction of the construct of PCK, a large uh, amount of research on teachers and teaching 
has uh, uh, tried to understand and unpack this construct of pedagogical content knowledge. So one way to look at it is, as I already told you earlier, uh, this is the bringing together the transformation of the content knowledge and the pedagogical knowledge. And the way PCK manifests itself can be looked at in the form of four different components. So one is the knowledge of curricula, uh, which includes a specific curriculum uh, documents of the country or uh, the provinces in which uh, teachers uh, teach. And it also includes the broader goals and objectives of teaching, say, mathematics uh, to students at the secondary level. Um, the second component uh, can be visualized as the knowledge of students' understanding. Again, this includes both the prior conceptions that students bring in, as well as uh, the misconceptions or alternate conceptions that they hold on to. So research in, uh, for example, science teaching shows us how complex it is to uh, be able to address the alternate conceptions of uh, students. So teachers have to consciously uh, plan. Uh, so first, before planning, teachers have to know what are the alternate conceptions that students bring in uh, while learning a concept, uh, say, like uh, motion. Uh, and then plan for uh, lessons that actively engage with these alternate conceptions and help students change these two accepted uh, conceptions within the scientific community. The third component is the knowledge of uh, the teaching strategies. So again, this involves different forms of representations of the content, the uh, specific strategies, the examples that a teacher uses, uh, the different approaches like activity-based uh, uh, learning, uh, a project uh, uh, approach, um, a guided inquiry, depending on the topic that uh, she teaches and also the context of the students and the resources available for the teacher. The fourth component is the knowledge of context, which is very important. So it includes understanding the context of the school where the teacher is teaching, of course, the context of the students, as well as the larger community. So she is able to plan her lessons in a way that uh, uh, students are able to relate to what they are learning and make meaning out of it. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, so in the context of inclusion, we also heard uh, UDL. So would you like to throw some light on uh, the UDL framework? Uh, in this? Um, so the universal design learning uh, is a concept that is borrowed from architecture. And in education, it has been found to be a very good heuristic to uh, use. A heuristic means a broad framework under which a teacher can plan to ensure uh, that she is able to reach out to the diverse needs of all her students in the classroom. Um, so the UDL framework uh, primarily consists of three components. One uh, is representation, um, a, being able to provide different ways of rendering the content um, in the form of graphics, in the form of audio, video, in the form of uh, actual physical uh, 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 tasks and exercises. So as we all know, different uh, learners have uh, different uh, needs and they come with uh, different ways of being able to learn a particular content. So no one representation will be able to uh, reach out to uh, all uh, students and therefore it becomes important for a teacher to have a, a, a repertoire, a wider understanding of how she will be able to render the content that she is teaching in different uh, forms. The uh, second uh, factor in the UDL uh, framework is engagement. Um, so just as it is important for us to be able to represent content in different form, represent knowledge in different form, so is it to, uh, equally important to be able to engage students um, in diverse ways. Because again, uh, what appeals to one uh, set of students will not appeal to another set. 
And therefore it is important for a classroom to be active, for uh, students to be actively engaged in making meaning of what they are learning. It's important to use creative ways of engagement. So uh, as I was already mentioning while talking about PCK, this could uh, include uh, guided learning approach. It could uh, include uh, open-ended uh, investigation. It could include uh, uh, project work. It could include laboratory work. So there are many examples of how to make a classroom more engaging. The third aspect uh, and equally important is uh, action and expression uh, in terms of how uh, the kinds of opportunities that a teacher provides for the uh, students to be able to express what they have learned. Um, of course, in formal schooling, written expression is uh, um, important, uh, but sometimes school students need scaffolding to be able to um, uh, write uh, and express what they uh, know adequately. And uh, the process of scaffolding can uh, involve uh, multiple means of uh, representation, which will include, uh, for example, uh, miming, it can include uh, uh, drawing, uh, it can uh, also include, uh, say, uh, a song, uh, making a uh, song out of a particular uh, concept and how you express uh, that. Yeah, that's interesting. So, uh, yeah. So, so far we uh, have heard from you about the four aspects of the CL for STEM pedagogy. Uh, now, can you share some, uh, like, share how the common pedagogy module and uh, probably the other subject modules uh, developed uh, in CL for STEM addresses uh, these four aspects? Um, yes, to uh, support teachers uh, learning and to be able to uh, more concretely understand the framework that we have just shared with you, namely uh, pedagogical content knowledge and the universal design learning principle. We have developed a common pedagogy module. Um, so this module uh, provides a broad introduction to the CL for STEM uh, project. It explains the conceptual framework that I have very briefly described here uh, now. And uh, it also explains about uh, the community of practice, what it means to be uh, within a community of practice and the ways and means uh, through which the uh, community of practice can be made more vibrant for uh, peer group learning. Uh, there is another uh, uh, audio recording of uh, um, how to set up the community of practice and make it uh, more vibrant. Uh, another unit on uh, in the common pedagogic module talks about general pedagogic uh, practices, and uh, it defines uh, PCK. It defines the um, the ways in which the elements of uh, PCK can be developed uh, over a period of time. And uh, it gives an introduction with uh, adequate examples from both uh, the science streams as well as mathematics uh, domain in terms of uh, the different examples of pedagogic principles uh, that can be used. And also gives examples for how to design lessons in uh, say a chemistry classroom using UDL uh, framework. Then the third unit describes the context and uh, resources that are essential for an active classroom uh, teaching purposes. And uh, it discusses about using local resources, uh, how to use classroom interaction, the criteria for evaluation, and uh, how to represent uh, content in multiple uh, ways, uh, as I was just describing earlier uh, under the UDL uh, framework. Um, so this is one uh, common pedagogic module. Other than that, every teacher will also be going through a subject specific uh, content. Uh, there will be three uh, topics under the subject uh, specific content. Um, so if you're a biology teacher, you will be doing one common uh, pedagogy module and then three uh, sets of uh, modules in uh, biology in different uh, topics. 
Um, so they, uh, within the common pedagogy module, we are only discussing about uh, the nature and uh, structure of science and uh, mathematics and uh, the important role of language in a uh, uh, science uh, classroom uh, and uh, the idea of proof and how to uh, arrive at proof, which is so important uh, in a mathematics uh, classroom. Um, in fact, Jeanneth has contributed substantively to developing the common pedagogy module. Uh, and uh, Jeanneth, I want to thank you for taking the effort in shaping up this uh, module. Thank you, and uh, thank you for elaborating uh, on the ideas, uh, different ideas that are uh, used uh, in the CL First Time project and how they are adapted uh, in the different modules that are developed under CL First Time. So, uh, uh, thank you for joining us. And probably, please stop the recording. Yeah. Thank you, Gina. It was my pleasure. <laughs>